Sometimes technology can seem a bit dystopian and sad, but it, uh, it also gives us little gadgets with switches and clicky buttons, and those, and those are fun to, you know, go, so as long as those are around, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> DeepSeek R1, the Chinese AI model that matches OpenAI's O1 for a fraction of the cost, has the entire AI world panicking partially because it costs a fraction of what it takes to run O1, and it's open weights, so you can run it locally. But investors really started to freak out when DeepSeek surged to the top of the free apps list on the iOS App Store, passing ChatGPT, Threads, and even Block Blast. As a victory lap, DeepSeek also dropped a multimodal model this morning called Motown. Nope. Just, just wanted to keep the M's going. It's called Janus Pro, which they say beats OpenAI's Dolly 3 on a couple of benchmarks that apparently still mean something. The whole thing has investors shook, leading to massive drops in tech stocks across the board. Even Nvidia dropped by a whopping 16% as confused, non-techie investors struggled to figure out whether this means companies still need literal shiploads worth of GPUs from Team Green? I, I, we, NVIDIA tried to explain through Bloomberg that AI models are still gonna have to run on something, although it's unclear whether it's gonna be DeepSeek R1 for much longer. The company says it's weathering a cyber attack, so it's limiting new signups, which were apparently only being allowed for users with a Chinese phone number, but that notice is now gone. Whether it comes back or not, DeepSeek has given American AI companies a kick in the pants, with Meta reportedly setting up war rooms to analyze DeepSeek's tech. Zuck needs to know how they did this. Did they learn jujitsu and try to make Joe Rogan like them? What's their secret? Intel has released their highly anticipated second field update for their Core Ultra 200S desktop processors, which the company promised would deliver a massive performance boost to the troubled Arrow Lake lineup. To get the fix, you have to update to both a BIOS with Intel's new fixes, as well as update Windows 11 to the correct version, making me wonder, who really did all the work here? It's fine. Thankfully, KitGuru has already tested it out, and they first asked us to check ourselves, because in Cinebench Multicore, the Core 9 Ultra 285K is right where it always was at the top of the chart, and I didn't know that. It also got a massive boost in Cyberpunk 2077, where it's actually better than its 14th gen predecessor now. Wow! It just goes to show that, oh, but it barely got better in other games, and in some of them, the older chips actually improved more. <laughs> yeah. Good news for everyone, then. Uh, Gplay, a Bulgarian PC retailer, has revealed some interesting details about the mystery of AMD's Radeon RX 9070 pseudo-launch. Uh, Gplay confirmed they do have RX 9070 XTs in stock, despite AMD recently saying the cards would launch in March. They also hinted at the original pricing which, when translated and calculated by videocards.com with a Z, indicates the RX 9070 XT had an original MSRP of around $900, while the RX 9070 non-XT would have been around $750, with an originally planned launch date of January 23rd, before Intel and then Nvidia came with low-priced competitor cards and just f***ed it all up. It's kind of what we all expected, but it just hits different being calmly explained by a Bulgarian in plaid. Here's a bone for the AMD fanboys, though. Team Red says the integrated GPU in their Ryzen AI Max 395 laptop APUs demolish the mobile versions of Nvidia's RTX 4070 by up to 68%. Awesome. Can I plug it into my PC though? Cause no. So that's fine. Cause the only thing I want to plug is our sponsor Odoo and their full suite of business management software, which brings together pretty much everything you need to run your business in one platform. It's like the chicken pot pie of business software. It, what? It's got it's protein, veggies, carbs. It's, it's got everything. It's all your nutrients. And Odoo's easy to use with a user-friendly and customizable interface, just like the Pi. Okay, I'm dropping this one. Odoo's got everything with apps to manage sales and inventory tracking, accounting, invoicing, project management with customizable interfaces. You can even set up a forum with official documentation and a reward system to encourage engagement. But if that pie sounds a bit too big for you, sorry, you only have to use the apps your business needs. And if you only need one app, it's free. 
Use our link in the description to book a demo with their expert team to learn how Odoo can help your business or just sign up for a free 15-day trial, no credit card required. Ooh, and now I get to press the quick bits button. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Meta says their Meta AI chatbot will now personalize its responses using users' Facebook and Instagram account data. So it'll be able to give you activity recommendations based on things like the home city listed in your profile and photos that you've uploaded, whether you want it to or not. Yeah, Meta told TechCrunch that users won't be able to opt out of giving their AI a more personal touch. But Meta AI can also now remember things that you've explicitly told it in messages, and you can ask it to forget those things. Like, say you've already told Meta AI that you're vegan. You can delete that because it's so fun to keep reminding people. Google has taken down almost three years worth of firmware images for the Pixel 4a previously hosted on a support page, only providing the most recent firmware, which many 4a users say has tanked their device's batteries. Google did announce earlier this month that the update, which is required to improve stability, basically kills the battery. So they offered free battery replacements or a payment of 50 bucks USD or a $100 discount on the purchase of another Pixel phone, which is fine. I would just love to know what horrible risk Google is mitigating through basically forcing people to stop using a lot of otherwise perfectly good phones. All they have to say is that it's haunted and I'll be fine. Michigan has officially passed a bill into law requiring the American state's high schools to offer at least one in-person computer science class. It's a great step forward for technological literacy. It's just you know, maybe a bit late, given that soon we're not going to have to use computers at all because open source Chinese AI is gonna do all of our work for us as long as we don't ask it about Tiananmen Square. I mean, good job, Michigan. And a hardware modder going by Crastinator Pro <laughs> has shown off his custom Steam Brick, so-called because it's a Steam Deck with everything except the internals removed. He says he did this because A, the Steam Deck didn't fit in his backpack, and B, he is not a smart man. His words, not mine. The real reason is this guy only ever used a device made for handheld gaming by plugging it into a TV or his smart glasses. Now, if you have any suggestions for stuff he should add to the brick, I'm gonna stop you right there. He says, it's not about adding, it's about removing. But he is considering giving it an assortment of hats. And I hope you wear the tech-linked viewer hat once again on Wednesday, because you'll come back for more tech news and you're not allowed to watch unless you wear the hat. What do you mean you haven't been wearing it this whole time? <laughs> what, 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 what are we doing?